boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots. I can do this all day. Cats and boots and 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 cats. There's a pretty good chance that you're already using a VPN. In fact, you're probably already using private internet access because they are one of the most popular VPN providers on the planet. They're as cheap as $2.69 a month and they have a 30 day money back guarantee. Not to mention they work on like everything, like Unraid, for example. I mean, you can hook things up and route things through it so easily. It's just, it's crazy. But just in case you don't and you want to try out private internet access, check out my links in the description down below to get your discount and support my god awful channel. What's up, YouTube? Jason here with Jason Bites Back, episode number quarantine. Quarenta y cinco. What's up, YouTube? Jason here with Jason Bites Back, episode number quarenta y cinco. Quarenta y cinco. Quarenta y cinco. Or for you boring English speakers out there, that is 45. I had to use my fingers. I don't know why. This is a series of which I go back over the last 30 days and I answer questions or respond to comments. So if you want the best chance of getting your question and or comment responded to, make sure to leave that in the comment section down below. Also, this series is brought to you by my awesome Patreon subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing to my Patreon. And as always, if you're a $5 plus Patreon subscriber, your name will be listed at the end of this video. So Jason bites back episode number 45. I have a new 3d printer addiction. It's ridiculous. I've got that flash forge thing and I have just been running it nonstop. In fact, you might hear it in the background, you know, unless I do some noise cancellation thing, you are probably going to hear it in the background throughout this video. But that is something that I have been playing around with and this the part of the addiction thing, like, okay. So this came with the printer. This is, you know what? I got all this like silver statue, like granite, p something purple, blue, yellow, a different purple, glow in the dark blue, gold, a white that's almost out. Got to order more that came with the flash forge. I also have a black. This sucks because these are like 20, $30 each, right? I have two more too, because they're being used in the printer because it's a dual extruder. I got a glow in the dark green and a bright green. I'm printing an alien head with glowing eyes. This is crazy. My thing with 3D printing is that when I tried before, I had a printer that kind of sort of worked, but failed more often than it worked. So I just got frustrated really and stopped messing around with it, lost my interest. I have the attention span of a dog chasing a squirrel. So when I got this one, I started printing things and everything has so far worked pretty well 95% of the time. And usually when it fails, it's because I try to skip a step or make it go faster, something like that. It's usually my fault, but uh, that's where we are right now. Actually, it is the next day. I am 17 hours and 41 minutes into this print, 74% done. Uh, I'm editing Jason Bites Back. I just got to this place where it says I've only had like 5% failure. And this happened, right? The eyes, you can see that, those came out. Um, those That's a wall. But this, for some reason, this Flash Forge just decided to move the layers over and completely screw up the entire print. I don't know why, it's even like off the bed now. It's like outside of its printing zone. I don't know what I did but this is definitely not the model and I'm gonna have to figure out what the hell just happened because I have absolutely no idea why it would do that. So this is my first 100% fail that I have no idea what I did wrong. My next step is going to be, since I have all these filaments, I literally am kind of just brand new to the whole 3D printer game again because I forgot everything that I learned last time. Now that I have all these filaments and I'm actually purchasing and storing these long-term, I gotta look at some kind of an option to store it in a dry area. I've looked up online. You guys will probably link some stuff down below, but I found like one uh, YouTube video where a guy built his own cabinet with an etch glass. It's a dehumidifier, you know, and you can pull string out and plug it right in. Like I want something like that. It doesn't necessarily have to feed the string. I just need some kind of a display thing to where, you know, it's dry and it's away. I don't know. You go on Amazon and it's like, you can store one or two, you know, for like $60 each. That's stupid. Another thing, right? 
files to download. I am just going through Thingiverse as much as I possibly can and finding all kinds of things that I want to print. But uh, I'm totally up for ideas. If you guys have some websites that great, have some great files to download that work really well, you know, maybe even some dual extruder setups, you know, link those down below. Again, I've had this thing, I've played with it, but I've also been busy, so I haven't really dove too far into the 3D printing world. But this is definitely the beginning of a new addiction. So with all that said, let's jump into the first question. And that is on Plex Changed the Game from Joel Crocker. He says, Jason, I have five computer servers. I am interested in buying the full version of Unraid. How many devices equals computers will the unlimited key work on? I know that Unraid works on all my systems, whereas FreeNAS does not. Well, Joel, I think you're getting the unlimited thing mixed up. It's not actually unlimited computers. It's actually unlimited drives. So the Unraid Pro allows you to use unlimited drives, well, up to 30 in a single array anyway, um, but you do not have the ability to load it on other servers. So if you have, let's say five servers and you wanna run its own version of Unraid on each server, then you're gonna have to buy an Unraid license for each server. Unfortunately, that's just, not the way it works to buy it one time and use it on all of them. However, if this is just a temporary thing and you're just kind of figuring things out, you can run Unraid in the trial mode and extend it twice. So you got like a total of, I think, 45 days to use Unraid um, and then even longer if you just never reboot it. Wouldn't that be stressful though? It's like, I can't reboot my server or my Unraid expires. Next question is from Kareem. K Karim. Kareem, I'm gonna go with Kareem. Hey Jason, why not print out glow in the dark baby Yoda? Or why not print out a craft computing logo? Well, I actually printed out this skull, which I put up there, but uh, I printed out this skull and this took four days. It was on the highest setting with the Flash Forge printer, highest setting, slowest speed, everything. I wanted the, you know, the most detail that I possibly could and the best detail I possibly could. I don't wanna sand stuff, that's, that's my weakness. Um, that's a lot of work. I just don't want to do it. I just want to print it and enjoy it. So I printed this out with the white filament and then I've been playing with glow in the dark filament. It's green. And I've even ordered, I got another one coming in the mail that's like a sparkly green glow in the dark filament that I want to make like a crystal skull glowing in the dark print. So that's going to be my next big print. Once I know that filament works great, I'm going to print off another skeleton because I don't know, it's just kind of cool. As far as a craft computing logo, I have no idea who that is. <laughs> Next question is from Antoni. But will it support other emulators besides Atari, SNES? Perhaps can I load my own ROMs? He is referring to the latest and greatest Plex add-on feature called Plex Arcade. It was a video that I did. It was a sponsored video. I gotta be honest here. Yes, you can load your own ROMs. No, I did not look into it. Um, I think it's an interesting feature, Personally, it's not something I'm gonna use. It was just more of a demonstration purpose for me. My primary service server right now is Unraid. So getting it fully functional past, you know, the new feature release wasn't really too interesting for me. But I do know that Lawn TV did dive a little bit into the ROMs and, and talk, I think a little bit about it. I didn't watch this whole video, but I know that that was something that he was looking into. Um, I know it's possible, but I don't know if you still have to pay for the service or if it's just the connecting to the you know third-party service that cost extra. I mean, this is a new feature. It's still in its infancy. I was not able to remote play you know off network with my iPhone, which I thought in turn meant you can't play on anything. But no, it's just iOS stuff. So you know, again, it's just one of those features that hey, that's interesting. Just personally, not for me. I also don't use Plex Music. I just listen to Pandora. I don't want to you know build my own music library. I just wanna hit play. And then if I don't like something, I say, don't play that. Next question is from Christopher. This may be a silly question, but are you not wearing and tearing your RAM now instead of your SSD? This is about Plex RAM transcoding. Is it better than an SSD? Well, Chris, yes, you are technically putting the wear and tear off of your SSD to your RAM. However, that's what RAM does. That's literally its entire purpose in life is to randomly read and write information all the time. RAM by nature is more resistant to degradation than SSDs are. I'm not saying RAM doesn't fail, but I've had computers online like for literally a decade and I've yet to actually have RAM go out, but I've had SSDs go out from just being used too much. So on top of that's what they're built for, 
it's usually faster. If you're transcoding to an SSD or even to a hard drive, it's just sometimes faster to transcode to RAM. So it's a win. Next question is from Ryan on the Flash Forge Creator 2. Is too easy. He said, still waiting on a 2021 Plex client showdown. The tease is intense. Ryan, I've seen your comments and I'm sorry. I've sanded back that video a lot in lieu of other videos that were already pre-planned and honestly, I just have not got to it yet. But today is the first, that's with the Jason Bites back. And then sometime later this week, I'm going to be reviewing this brand. I don't even know what it's called. Pecron. So this is up next, right? This is way overdue. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, but I had some like tests that I wanted to confirm first before I actually, you know, said it was better than something else. Um, so yeah, that's my next video after this. And then I have to do a deep dive into the Plex clients. I've started playing around with some of them, primarily the Apple TV and I, God, I hate that remote so much, but I just need to buckle down and do that. So Ryan, yes, the T's is sandbagging really, and I apologize, it's in the works. I promise I will get it done this month, February, this month. It's, it'll be, it'll happen. Next question is from Disable. This is about the Synology surveillance station being better than Blue Iris. He said, isn't Blue Iris only $60 for the full version? It's not a yearly subscription, or did they change it? Yes, Blue Iris is only a one-time cost of $60 or $59.99. However, if you would like to continue to get updates for your Blue Iris server past the one year after purchase, you will have to renew and pay them again. And while that does kind of suck as far as having an everlasting subscription that you have to pay with no option to buy it outright, I mean, they do update it quite frequently and sometimes they fix some major issues and it's nice having updates. When I do updates, it's usually like once every six months. So, you know, if I only lasted a year, I'd have two months worth of upgrades. However, your Blue Iris server will not shut down after your, you know, subscription or your one year support plan is up. Next question is from Ricky about the simple NUC. OMG, I saw the price, I almost threw up, but damn, Long story short, can you say this little NUC is better than your Zeus server? Oh yeah. If I were to guess, I would think that you're probably referring to Loki, which is the most recent, you know, big Plex media server build that I've done. Zeus was the one before that, and Zeus, if you were comparing that Simply NUC to Zeus, I mean, Zeus couldn't hardware transcode. It didn't have a CPU that supported it. It had absolutely no room to put any GPU into. I mean, I think it can handle like 10 streams, 1080p transcoded down to two megabits per second, maybe 11 on a good day. The Simply NUC, I don't remember the numbers, but I know it was like high 30s if I remember right. So yes, it absolutely demolishes anything Zeus could ever imagine doing. As far as Loki goes, well, Loki's running an RTX 4000 and its primary choke point there is going to be RAM, like uh, VRAM. So while the RTX 4000 itself doesn't really run into any kind of like limitations processing wise, the VRAM RAM because the way Plex allocates its transcoding streams does hit an upper limit and does start to stutter. I that simply NUC thing, it just uses the Intel 10th gen uh, built in GPU. It handles RAM a lot better. It doesn't pre allocate and stutter. And it's just, it's, it's honestly way faster. I think my next server is probably going to be a 10th gen Intel CPU. And that's it. It's sad to say, but uh, I don't know if I really need a GPU anymore, just based off of the 10th gen you know, built-in graphics. But yes, you are right, it is super expensive, but it's also super small. And I mean, it's just powerful AF. Next question is from DJ Coma. Since this garage update is a never ending thing, your next job is to acoustically treat your garage so it doesn't sound like a gymnasium. Well, you're right. I've actually thought about this before. The bass traps that you put in the corners, that helps a lot. Uh, I wanna get some, I was thinking about getting some that like, uh, actually fall down from the ceiling a little bit, but then I put my lights in and then I was like, well, I could still put them in between those. But if you wanna do those acoustic panels, like to actually get good ones, you either A, have to make them yourself and they're half decent, or B, you gotta spend a crap ton of money on them. So at the moment, I just kind of not doing that much more to the garage. Cause yes, I spent a crap load of money on it and uh, just, just taking a break. Next question is from Ate. What's the problem with the Apple TV remote? It's amazing remote and I have two Apple TVs in my house and it's an amazing experience. The only problem with the Apple TV remote is that it hasn't have a mute button, that's it. I wholeheartedly disagree. 
I set up the Plex 4K TV client in my main viewing area to start using it and playing around with it primarily because I wanted the home kit so I could talk to Siri and tell her to do stuff when I'm outside of the house. And because of that, I've been using the client and I still, even with practice, trying it out, trying to remember all, I hate the remote, the touch screen, the clicking, the way you have to, to try to fast forward, to try to rewind, to pause it. I mean, the entire experience is a cluster F, you know? And I'm sure with time, with experience, I could train myself to understand the remote and use it more effortlessly. However, if you have to train yourself to use something over a long period of time to be comfortable with it, is that really convenient? I don't think so. It is a hot pile of garbage and I absolutely hate it. And I plan on basically shelving that, you know, <laughs> Apple 4K TV in my server room and never hooking it up to a TV ever again unless I ever have to use it for a video, primarily because of the remote. That is unless the Apple TV itself experience is so much better than everything else that I plan on trying, which I really doubt, but if it is, then I'll probably look at using an alternative remote with the Apple TV because you can do that as well. But I'm just looking at the basics. What comes with the box? Next question is from uh, Runehorn on the don't renovate your garage until you watch this. This is way cheaper than I had in my head as I've been following the saga. I think it turned out good. I'm glad you did not spend 30 to 40K like I thought you did. Well, I mean, honestly, I spent like 15K just in materials and 2K of that was tools, maybe 2,500 was in tools, um, but I did a lot of the work myself with the exception of putting up and hanging the drywall. Everything else from mudding, texturing, you know, painting, et cetera, like trim, everything else I did by myself. So I don't know how much labor that would have been. I mean, I, I really don't. But if I would have actually paid someone to install all of that raw material, I'm sure it would have gotten a lot more expensive. Maybe only like seven to $10,000 more expensive, but uh, you know, I kind of got like a learning experience out of it. I was able to make some content over it and I got it for cheaper. So it was kind of a win, win, win for me. If I could go back and redo it, I wouldn't do it. I would install garage heaters and that's it. Garage heaters. Done. Next question is from Jason Bice back episode number 44. It's the live stream. <laughs> he says, 1955 DMB, he or she says, do you still use your whole body vibration machine? With a lot of question marks after it. Well, the answer is yes and no. Uh, yes, in terms of when I actually work out, I do like to get on the vibration machine because you can set it to different levels and I can just sit there and watch TV, right? And it's just kind of like, it's cardio without having to do cardio and it actually kind of keeps your heart rate going and I do like it, but no, because I don't work out like I should. It's on my list of things to do. Maybe tomorrow, until tomorrow, then it's tomorrow. And the next question is from, that is it. That is the last question. Boom. Guys, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. You awesome Patreon subscribers, $5 plus, will be at the end of this video. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day. a great day. Have yourself a great day. Okay, that's just goofy. Okay, now that it's the end of the video, let's get back to, to filament stuff, right? You guys can exit out if you don't wanna you know, hear any of this. So I've been printing nonstop since I've had this printer and I've gotten to things like, like this. Uh, the Flash Forge little thing on the back sucked as far as holding filament, so I printed out new holders to hold different size filament rolls. Uh, so that was like the first utilitarian or utility thing that I printed off. Uh, then I printed a cable organizer, and then I got these, these little clips. I think they're called dragon clips or something, right? These things are awesome because I kept putting the filament in the holes on the side when I was done, but then whenever I go back to use the filament, it's always bent. So then I end up cutting the filament, you know, losing a little bit of filament each time. So I printed these off. I mean, I really, since I'm into this 3D printing stuff, it's really hard to not want to print junk. You know, I can print collectibles all day. You know, I can have little skulls and aliens and I can have shit all over my house all day long. But I want to try to make useful stuff. 
you know, like the clips, stuff for the 3D printing, things like that. I've even looked at, you know, filament holsters and rollers and things that you can print off like that. Um, but I want to I want to get into more useful stuff. So I want to find a real world problem to solve it with a 3D printer. Right. And that's not like looking for ideas. That's me just day to day instead of getting on Amazon and doing next day prime, you know, and, and solving a problem that I need. Right. Just printing it off. Primary example, this. Right. Um, I'm now using my phone because the comment section on YouTube on the Chrome uh, page sucks. So I've been taking screenshots, putting it on my phone and then reading off the questions from my phone because it is a thousand times easier now that YouTube has completely screwed up their comment section for the creators. So then I was thinking, this is my charging plate. I was actually thinking since I don't have a good phone holder because this is not really meant for the big iPhone, right? This is really meant for tablets. It doesn't really fit my iPhone, right? So. I was thinking to myself, you know what? There's like a million different iPhone or just phone holders that you can download and print, right? That is the kind of stuff that I want. As soon as this alien head is done printing, I'm going to print off a phone holder. Not because they desperately need it, but because I just want to be able to use it for something useful. So that's it. Also, I, want, I do want to find some websites. Thingiverse is the one that I've been using. I, I think I've accidentally found another one one time, but I didn't bookmark it. So, you know, I'm up for ideas for good, you know, free downloads. Um, maybe in the future, I'll pay some premium for some premium designs. But uh, for the most part, unless I really, really need something, and I want to pay for it. I'm just using free stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm having fun with glow in the dark things right now. This alien head, it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to take about a day to print, but it's going to be pretty cool. Okay, that's it. 3D printer for life, yo.